Oprah Winfrey once said, Don't get confused between what people say you are and who you know you are. How well do you know yourself? If you clicked on this video, you probably want to gain some more insight into your own psychology and personality. We've already covered the Myers-Briggs. Today, we're talking about the Hexaco Personality Inventory. The Hexaco was developed by Kibiom Lee and Michael C. Ashton in 2000 and measures the six dimensions of a personality. All of the Hexaco dimensions are on a spectrum. You can score very low, very high, or somewhere in between. Stay tuned to find out your Hexaco score. Let's go. H is for honesty and humility. According to Lee and Ashton, if you have a high score in honesty humility, you probably don't manipulate others to get what you want. You aren't interested in breaking rules or achieving a high social status. You see yourself as equal to your friends rather than above them, and you don't care much about having expensive things or living a luxurious lifestyle. A 2009 study published in the Journal of Research in Personality showed that people who are higher in honesty humility are more likely to cooperate and act fairly. When given a hypothetical choice in how to divide money between themselves and someone else, they chose to split it equally rather than keep it for themselves, even if there weren't any consequences for taking the money. On the other hand, people who have a low score of honesty humility are more likely to break the rules and flatter others to get ahead. They feel very self-important and are highly motivated by money and materialistic goals. E is for emotionality. Take a moment to think about the relationships in your life. Do you heavily empathize with your friends when they feel down and lean on them for emotional support? This is a sign that you are high in emotionality. If you score high in this factor, you might also feel anxious, especially in situations that are physically dangerous and have a hard time dealing with stressful situations. But maybe you feel the opposite. You don't really feel compelled to talk to your friends about your problems. You don't form strong attachments with them and you don't get too worried in dangerous or stressful situations. According to Lee and Ashton, these traits indicate that you might be low in emotionality. Researchers suggest that emotionality may have an evolutionary benefit. Those who score high in this factor tend to seek and give emotional support. Supporting others in our tribe and getting this support in return allows us to form mutually beneficial relationships that increase our odds of survival. X is for, okay, this is kind of cheating, but extroversion. Studies show that out of all the hexaco factors, extroversion is the most strongly associated with well-being. According to a study published in Personality and Individual Differences, the higher someone scored in extroversion, the more likely they were to report higher levels of happiness and life satisfaction. Someone who is highly extroverted loves to go to parties and socialize. They are confident, highly energetic, and optimistic. If you're low in extroversion, you might not be too enthusiastic about going out and meeting new people. You might also struggle to feel confident, especially in large groups, and feel that you are not well liked by others. A is for agreeableness. A high level of agreeableness means that you are forgiving, non-judgmental, and cooperative. You tend to get along well with others and don't get mad easily. If you score low in agreeableness, you might find it difficult to forgive people who hurt you. You may get angry quickly when someone doesn't treat you well, you strongly defend your point of view, and you can easily find flaws in others. According to a study by De Vries and colleagues, interestingly, people who are low in agreeableness were rated by others as being less likable, but more popular than those who are high in agreeableness. This could be because the less agreeable someone is, the more money they tend to make, so their peers might admire them because they're successful, but may find it difficult to get along with them. C is for conscientiousness. Highly conscientious people are disciplined and organized. Some people might consider them to be perfectionists. They are neat, manage their time well, work diligently to meet their goals, and are highly accurate in their work. They also tend to think through all of their options before making a decision. Does this sound like you? If so, you might score high in this trait. This also might be a Hermione type, you know, really good in school. A study published in the European Journal of Personality found that people who are high in conscientiousness are also more likely to perform well academically. People who are low in conscientiousness don't care as much about keeping a well-organized schedule or a clean workspace. They don't enjoy setting goals that are hard to accomplish and aren't too bothered if they make a mistake. 
They can be somewhat impulsive and quick decision makers. A real Weasley, if you know what I mean. And finally, O is for openness to experience. If you are high in openness to experience, you might be known as the artsy one in your friend group. The one who loves nature, could spend hours in a gallery and is very imaginative. You may also be a very curious person who is interested in learning about new topics, especially if they are unconventional. Can't relate to any of these traits? Then you might be low in openness to experience. You might not be very interested in doing creative things and the idea of going to an art gallery just sounds boring. You might not be particularly excited about learning new things or hearing others' ideas. When looking for a romantic partner, you might want to consider whether the level of openness to experience and honesty humility matches yours. A study by Liu and colleagues found that when partners are similar in these traits, or at least perceive themselves to be similar, they have higher relationship satisfaction. Wherever you fall in the Hexaco or any other personality model, remember that there are no good or bad personality types. Someone who is introverted, for example, is no better or worse than someone who is extroverted. They are simply different. The variety of different traits that we possess is part of what makes human beings so fascinating. Your personality is beautiful and contributes to the much needed diversity of ideas and temperaments in the world. We hope this video helped you understand and appreciate the things that make you, you. Want to take the Hexaco questionnaire for free? Click on the link in the description box below and get your results right away. You can go to hexaco.org forward slash hexaco online. Share your scores in the comment section and see if you are similar to others in our community. If you want to see more videos that help you understand yourself and others, subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks for watching.